out for a little walk around at Yelverton Aerodrome because this is the best day we've got. It's not going to be raining today. In fact, when I looked at the weather, like for all of Devon, it said it's going to be sunny, in fact, for a couple of hours towards Plymouth. So I've gone halfway to Yelverton Aerodrome. That's where we are today. You can see Dry, it's not raining, that's the important thing, but it is blustery windy and the wind is ice cold when it gusts and it keeps uh, coming in and gusting. But when the sun does peek through the clouds, which is a fair amount, it's quite nice, it takes the edge off the wind chill. Hello sheep. These are the old kind of uh, World War II airfield relic foundations all around here of course I've got a full video on that but it was taken in the rain but you can see all of these different things here that are on the aerodrome but to do with that if you go and see that video and a nice little amble around the region where I've parked it's a fun little area for new drivers of course the old aerodrome is really flat and wide and spacey Grass is low if you come off the road or whatever. There's one of those. So you just keep happening upon these little concrete foundations, and they used to be aerodrome buildings for World War II, like uh, airport basically. For the fight. If this is the best that it's going to get for now, I'll take it. But this is like this could be like first day of spring. I don't know. Man. It might just rain forever after this day, like it has been for the past three months of the year. Just trying to find those little reprieve days where the sun comes out to do something. I should mention, I managed to get a job the other day, so... I will be working quite a few hours, so that gives me less time to go out in the mall, but... It's a good thing because it actually gives me the money to recover, I think. I lost about £7,000 due to my family's bad decisions in the past two years and the domestic abuse situation and all that. And I'm down quite low, I'm only like £1,000 or so above like a line I've drawn on my account, which is a certain line which I called like homelessness budget, which is like if I go under this line I should only eat like bread and stuff bread and milk, I guess, for uh, the remainder of how long, how that long that lasts, or whatever's cheaper than that for food, tinned food or something. But luckily I got a job before I got anywhere near that line, so I spend a few years, I try and pin down this job, try and wrestle this job to the ground and pin it down, hold it in place work there for as long as I can, for as many hours as they'll give me, which I think is 20 hours a week at the moment, at whatever dumb minimum wage thing is, which shouldn't exist, £11 or something an hour. Try and get back to where I was before all this mess two years ago, and uh, obviously I have money to pay on all the car things, because the insurance is what, a, a thousand, almost two thousand a year? That's crazy. That's like almost the cost of the car, which was two thousand. Then I gotta pay fuel, I gotta pay maintenance, I gotta pay. Road tax isn't too bad. I mean, it is bad because it's the government stealing from me, but apparently they can only steal 35 pounds a year on, on this car from me, so whatever. That's a very small amount compared to other cars. I think other cars you end up having to pay like 300 pounds a year or, or more. So it's not that. So I'm grateful for that. 
even though it shouldn't happen anyway. It's tax, it shouldn't, it's theft. It shouldn't happen at all. With this job, I can uh, slowly build myself back up, I guess. Fingers crossed. We'll see how it goes. Got my second day of training in a couple of days, and that's been going fine. People seem nice so far, even though they're normies and everything that comes with that, you know, me being a libertarian. Talk to normies about deep stuff and they don't really understand what you're on about, so you kind of have to talk to them about shallow, small talk stuff. It is what it is. God, I hate that phrase. Thank you, V, for putting that in my head. I guess what I mean by it is what it is is I unfortunately have to work within the fucking system until I have some kind of opportunity or level of cash where I can get away from that. Let's do a little loop around here. Let's do a little loop. I'm parked up there in a nice little bay that is part of like an aerodrome foundation. So I'm gonna go towards what is that, Sharp at all? Maybe go up there at some point. Towards Sheep Store, around here, towards the Erdrim Bays, and that circle in the ground. I wonder if I'll see that. And come back here through this clearing, past where I'm parked, and go to the other Aerodrome Foundations. Where there used to be like gunnery platforms and things. I suppose they used to have any, like mounted anti air turrets on the ground up there. Anyway, you can watch that video, Yelverton Aerodrome, Walk in the Rain video on my channel. It even has maps, like on-screen maps of each thing I'm visiting, like the bomb storage place and all that. Not much to see, but you can kind of see what was there and what it looks like now, anyway. Vegetation's trying to grow through it. Looks like there used to be a lot of ferns here, but there's like some mounds underneath. Probably so just weeds of some kind. These ones look like permafrost mounds, like you get on Coxsaw. Charlesworthy Tours and Legis Tour. I wonder if you can see a Legis Tour from here. hours and, and win. That would be crazy if someone has done that. That's what I used to think it would take. Little did I know. It took me like 70. Does a bog need to have that peat stuff under it to be a bog? Or can you just get away with the slang becoming the actual definition? It's boggy here, so it must be a bog. There's so much water actually. I might go over to that. I 
you draw along that line to, I think that's called Compass Platform. Oh, it's just getting to it though, it's so boggy. Trudge, trudge, trudge. Good thing I got my hiking boots on. Well, it looks marginally less boggy along this route, so I'm going to walk to that and then take a wide sweeping curve to the left to avoid all this which looks swamped from the rain. The more or less constant rain of 2024. This will be a, a horrible history that people will wish to forget, kind of like the parts of the lockdowns. featured in a couple of my videos before. I think it's called Campus Platform. It's a big cracked concrete circle and uh, nature's reclaiming it. Now to find a way to where we were but without going in the water. Easier said than done. This is cool though. Got some Actually, I don't know what kind of flowers these are. They're not buttercups. They're not dandelions either. What is... What do you call that flower? I'm not actually sure. I'm actually kind of amazed that a lot of flowers and plants for springtime have actually been coming out since the daffodils died. But there's been, like, no sun. There's been hardly any sun at all, almost no sun. So I'm just wondering if the uh, flowers and stuff care about the sunshine. Maybe they don't even need it to come out. It hasn't been sunny until today for a, for a long time. Some kind of flagpole thing. Another foundation. There's some grooves in the ground. I do wonder what these things were, but all you just see is like foundations in different shapes. I guess I couldn't remove them or something. But there is. The wind is icy. I won't wait for them 17 degree days to come. I guess we're going to have to wait till May. Or maybe the end of April. We'll see how it goes. Must be the uh, effects of swaling here. Gorse burning. There's the prickly ass gorse. Yep. Here's the skeletons of gorse where they've swaled it. See the result of the burning there. kind of dry here. The burning has made it dry on the ground. Seeing that bit of wood reminded me. I kind of wanted to do some kind of woods camp at some point. A bit bushcrafty and try and find some fat wood which is the like sap of the tree stored in high concentrations in parts of the wood. I think of dead pine trees. But yeah, you need to find the ideal woodland for camping. I think you can camp in more woodland on the eastern side of Dartmoor in certain places. But I don't think they're pine woods, so I don't think that would be a place to look for fat wood. I have to go to one of the, uh, the many kind of managed 
pine woodlands, I guess. See if I can find any dead trees with pieces that have come off them. It's got a kind of reddish tint to it, so you can kind of tell when you've got a piece. And the point of those is, really good fire making equipment. Just takes a, a match better than any other kind of wood. So as long as you've got a little block of fat wood, you can put some shavings in your fire and it'll actually start a fire. So you can have a little bushcraft campfire. Just take it with you anywhere you go, a little supply. I haven't even found my first piece yet. I want to find my first piece of fat wood, damn it. bays to park at so I can get to the second dam, see some water, see if it's any more sheltered. There's sheep saw and there's the second dam. I didn't even have to drive to Joey's Lane to find a place to park which I think would mean I'd walk up from that side. You can see how windy it is though, and how muddy from the rain, because the, uh, the wind is blowing the water. There's a, um, what is that, is that Levitor? Levitor and a bit of North Hessery from this angle, which is kind of cool. I don't think I've seen that popping out behind there before. Little Levitor too. Look at the blustery wind just sweeping through and blowing all these water waves to this little dam here. It's quite a nice place though. Interesting duck thing there as well. It's underwater, it's swimming. Where is it? Did it come up rare? Right there it is. Is that a green? Here he goes again. Fishing. Didn't change my shoes, which was silly, but it's all right. I'm not going very far. Just felt like uh, after the aerodrome, felt like getting some food. Had some trouble parking, then found a secret place to park, which was pretty cool. And then just thought I want to see some water, and it's kind of sheltered-ish around here at Burrito Reservoir because you can see all the trees are sort of around the edges. So it's kind of sheltered and uh, I can sit and watch some water while I eat a bit more food. <laughs> There's a nice view up there. So we've got a shark in the middle, another tour on the right, Peak Hill and Maori tour on the left. And up there you've got a sheep's Some going flat Rubicon to be in the car for however many days I bought it. Map of the area. But I know the area, so 
I don't need a map. It's a bit windy, so I've stuck this on. The wind's not too bad here, so I think the trees are actually cutting the, the wind down. It's actually quite nice to sit here. There's some Canada geese down there as well. Canada geese on the sheep store. And yeah, I'm wondering if there are any like signs around here saying no swimming and stuff. I bet there are. But this looks like an ideal place in summer for people to come just come down and swim. I'm wondering what's what the uh because they like have things under the water of these dams, don't they? Like obstructions or whatever. So I'm wondering what they've got under the surface that stops people swimming. There's that weird bird again. Can I get him? There he's gone, he's, he's diving again. I think it's a grebe. It's a nice view that way towards the cheap store. Turn the geese. Check that in there from the sausage. Where's that? Oh, he's 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 a grebe. He's diving. That pisky's cave might be up here somewhere. come here again. It's not that bad to get to from Yelverton and uh, you don't have to go as far as Joey's Lane, you can stop off well before that and just, um, the problem is on a busy day, I mean there's only space for like two cars on the side of the road there so might have to park in a different bay if I came on a different day. Hey, I'm a poet, I didn't know. If I walk to the other end of this, will I be able to see the other dam? Let's have a look. Keep going this way. There's the road. Keeps going down. Jerry's Lane. This goes there, zigzags off to Sheepstall Village, then there, Jerry Lane comes up here. And bays up there that you can use. Now I'm up high, the wind is catching me. So it's quite sheltered when you're down there by the water. Don't have the boots to go up sheep store. Well, I do, they're just in the car. But um, today is not the day for tour climbing. It's way too windy when you're just off the tours. So we'll save that and hope the weather improves. So it looks quite impressive through there. these catkins. I think they're catkins. If they're not, they're just whatever the seed of this plant is, but pretty cool. Whatever they are.
So, thanks for joining me on this trip. This is a travelogue, not a car vlog. <laughs> Although, should I insert some footage here? Thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.